Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to an all new Talkin' Movies. As always, I am your host, the real Gino, Gina Reynolds, and today we're going to be talking about Steve McQueen's new movie, Widows, starring Viola Davis, Michelle Rodriguez, Elizabeth Debicki, and many, many others. Uh, what this movie's about uh, is it's set in Chicago, and this group of criminals uh, dies whenever an explosion goes off, whenever they're uh, trying to escape the police and the money they stole ended up being from this this group of gangsters uh, ran, ran by these brothers and they needed this money because one of the brothers is trying to get out of the game and it's his money he's going to use towards his campaign um, to uh, beat this other candidate who had basically has this family legacy. So they blame the, uh, or they put the, the money owed onto, uh, the main criminal's widow, which is Viola Davis's character. The main criminal, uh, is Liam Neeson and he ends up leaving her his notebook with all his names and jobs and everything else. And he wants her to sell it to get out of trouble, but he uh what he doesn't realize is that she ends up using it to pull off his next job and i believe she wanted or he, she thinks he wanted her to pull off this next job instead of selling it even though uh their driver said you should sell it um i was really looking forward to this movie a lot and before i go any further let me just say i'll do my best not to spoil anything uh but it would be really hard it is going to be really hard for me to talk about my issues with this movie without spoiling big plot points. Um, so I'll just say I'll try not to spoil things, and I definitely won't give up the big uh, plot twists that happen. But just know that th I do have issues with this movie that I can't really talk about. So if I give it a less than stellar review, which don't get me wrong, I enjoyed this movie for what it was, and I'll explain why. There were some things that really bothered me about it that took what could have been a great movie and just made it a fairly enjoyable one. Uh, I, first things first, uh, you have a fantastic cast in this movie. Um, first, Viola Davis, fantastic in this movie. She's a great lead. Uh, Liam Neeson, for the little bit he's in it, he's Liam Neeson. You, you get what you pay for with him. Uh, John Bernthal's in it for a little bit. I would have liked a little more of his story, uh, but the movie is called Widows, so you kind of know what's going to happen to these guys. Um, he's one of the criminals that works for Liam Neeson. Uh, Michelle Rodriguez is the wife of one of the criminals. Uh, Elizabeth Debicki, who I really had no idea who she was. Uh, if I have to give a standout performance in this movie, uh, it's going to be her. Uh, her character goes from a... She, she, her character is married to John Bernthal's character. And what little bit we get, uh, we see that he's kind of an abusive asshole. And uh, he, he's one of those he beats her up and then says, uh, I love you, baby. I'm sorry. It won't happen again. You know, you know that type. Um, and plus, uh, you've come to find out that her mom is kind of an abusive bitch. So... Uh, she has lived with abuse and then, uh, there's a story arc where her mom is trying to push her into, uh, basically being an escort. Um, and there's just a whole storyline there. I think her character along uh, with Viola Davis's character got mo the most character arcs, uh, or the most complete character arc when it came to the main characters. Also, you have, uh, Robert Duvall in this. He plays this. Uh, longtime politician. His son is played by Colin Farrell, and he's going to be the one, I guess you can say, uh, inheriting uh, the position, the government position. Um, and you have uh, Brian Tyree Henry uh, as one of the brothers. Um, he's really good. Uh, there's just so many people in this that do such a fantastic job. Um, you also have, uh, and I'm going to butcher this guy's name. 
uh, Daniel Kaluuya as the other uh, brother. And see, one of the brothers just wants to get out of life. The other brother is kind of a bit of a homicidal maniac. Uh, definitely uh, is is easy to get violent. Um, and so you just have a great collection of actors whether they're in bigger or smaller roles. I mean, Garrett Dillahunt, uh, who I love, shows up in this. He plays uh, Viola Davis's driver. Um, and I love him in this. He's not in it a ton, but I, I love what Little B's in it. So you have uh, a fantastic cast. Uh, Jackie Weaver uh, is uh, Elizabeth Debicki's character's mom. Um, and everyone in this just does a great job, whether they are in a big or small part. So the acting is not my issue in this movie. Uh, nor is the look and style of the movie. There are some great scenes of where they just make Chicago. The way they shoot Chicago is, is just fantastic. Um, one scene and that I really loved, uh, is where they, uh, they follow Colin Farrell's character in a car. Um, he's, he's at this, uh, this fundraiser, uh, pep rally type event where he's trying to uh, he, he's on his position of I'm helping the the little guy uh, create businesses minorities create businesses right so the whole time he's got this reporter uh, just trying to get it under his skin while he's trying to speak at this thing this reporter's well, what about this indictment and what about uh, this audit and things like that. He's just kind of all over him. And he kind of, he finally addresses the guy. And then when he gets in the car to leave, uh, and they are in a more rundown neighborhood uh, at this point, by the way. And they show this whole conversation uh, between uh, Colin Farrell's character. And I believe, that, I don't know if they, I think it's supposed to be his wife. But it almost feels more like his assistant. Um, so I'm, I wasn't really, I didn't really catch that. So anyway, they're driving from this poor neighborhood back to uh, their home. And the whole conversation is one fixed camera shot on the outside of the car. And you're watching the background as uh, they leave the poorer part of Chicago and go to the richer part. And just the way he's talking about Chicago as they go, he's talking about how the city's going to destroy itself and, and things like that. There was also this, this incredible conversation was made even better by the imagery that was being showed in this one still camera shot that was attached to the car and the background was changing. So there's all sorts of stuff like that. The, when they finally get to the heist scene, uh, that stuff's really cool. Uh, just the way the film looked. I have no problem with the way the film looked. Um, my real issue with the movie, and I have like two big ones. One I can't talk about uh, at great detail, but the one issue that I have with this movie isn't really me putting the movie down. It's me thinking that there was too much going on that this movie would have been a better miniseries, um, which is what it's based on. It was it was based on a miniseries from the 80s, and I be believe another one was done in the early 2000s. Um, I think that there's too many stories going on to fit into a, whatever it is, two-hour, little bit plus two-hour runtime. That was one of my biggest issues with this. There's so many little stories going on. I wanted more time with these characters. I wanted them to I wanted some things explained more some things just kind of felt rushed because you have to deal with so many characters you have uh, the father and son politician you have the brothers gangsters when I'm wanting to be a politician uh, you have uh, four or five uh, main uh, female characters there's just so much going on that I would have liked more time with these characters but we don't get it because they have to keep moving the story along. Now, my biggest issue with the movie, again, I'm not going to spoil it, but here's the thing. There's something to be said about a movie that you can predict in the first five minutes. You may not have all the details because you haven't seen the movie. Maybe you've only seen one or two trailers, but there was a, a big twist in the movie 
that I said in the first five minutes, I said, you know, I have this hunch that this is going to happen. And at least in some way, and it happened. And though it doesn't ruin the movie for me, um, it definitely takes it down a notch because it, uh, it, it leads into the ending. And again, I won't spoil the ending, but it leads into making the ending feel way less believable. Um, and yes, I know this is a movie and this is just a story, but when you have a, an ending that you still wonder, well, there's kind of some loose ends here. Yeah. Some, you know, someone may whatever, get away, die, whatever the situation may be. You think, yeah, but what about this, this, and this? You're not completing the story here. Um, I just felt that the ending was way too Hollywood happy, especially for a movie like this, which is a pretty, a pretty downer movie. I mean, it's a fairly empowering movie, especially when it comes uh, to Viola Davis's character and Elizabeth Debicki's character, and even Michelle Rodriguez's character uh, gets a bit empowered. I mean, her story's some somewhat generic it's not too layered it's fine i mean there's nothing wrong with it but it's just it leads to this too happy of an ending where you're like wait a minute what about these factors this would have played into it how would this happen so that was my real main issue with it there's the it's predictable and the ending doesn't fit it doesn't fit i mean this is a story based in in somewhat reality and reality would stay unless unless they do plan a sequel, I guess, which you never know. I guess they might. Uh, I think Widows will do very good this weekend, and, and it de- deservingly so. It's a it's a decent movie. It's a decent uh, heist movie. But I just feel that if we don't get any more, then the ending to this movie just didn't work for me. Again, I still really enjoyed the movie. I love the acting in the movie. I love the way the movie looked, uh, felt it just, it was doing things pretty right. Even though, again, I predicted something that was going to happen right into the movie. It was, I had, I would say what my theory is about it, but that would give it away. Right. So I just have this, this thing I do with movies where it's like, well, if this, then I know that this, uh, and again, I just can't, I can't say it because then you'd be like, Oh, that's what happened. Um, but I still recommend the movie. I still think it's a really well done movie. It's a decent heist movie. Um, it's better the uh, it's a better, uh, female driven heist movie than say oceans eight was, even though I thought that one was okay. Um, you know, this is still a really good movie to see. And I don't want my, my issues with it to wreck your enjoyment of it. I'm just telling you what I thought that, well, though I enjoyed it and there's lots to enjoy that it's definitely not the perfect heist movie that a lot of critics are making it out to be. That's going to be all for this edition of talking movies. If you like what you've heard here, please feel free to leave a comment in the section below and like this video until next time. As always, I am your host, the real Gino, Gino Reynolds. See you later.